Hi, I'm Oscar van Deventer and today I'm going to show you some experiments that I've been doing uh, uh, with Shapeways uh, models and uh, things that I've been testing is uh, sprues and synthos shells. So what you see here is uh, two models of mine. At this moment they are anonymous uh, models. I'm not going to tell you uh, what they are but uh, instead I'm going to tell you how I've modeled them. So you have heard that Shapeways has changed its pricing model uh, mid-October 2014. And as a result, when you have puzzles that have many pieces, um, you have to pay a per piece price, which makes the model a bit more expensive. Well, more than a bit. But that's a different story. Um, there are several ways that you can reduce the cost. And the first way that I'm going to show you is sprueing. So what you see here, is a model and as you can guess it uh, looks a bit like a Rubik's Cube and if you look in very detail you see those little posts connecting the different pieces. So as a result this model has been 3D printed as a whole and these little posts are one millimeter in diameter. So the thing that I've learned from this model is that the one millimeter diameter is not enough. Shapeways has used uh, their equipment to uh, blast all the powder out and as you see some of the posts have been broken, one of the pieces has broken out and even though I don't care that the pieces get loose, Shapeways cares because it's a logistic nightmare for them. So for my next sprueing model, I'll, uh, for this next test with sprues, I probably have to make the diameter of these little posts thicker, like one and a half millimeter or even two millimeter. So here I'm going to show you uh, some of the pieces. As they are thin, it's quite easy to break away the parts. And I'm quite curious uh, what's getting out. Uh, okay, so, well, you see uh, how easily they break. Some of them I can't get to break, so I brought some tools. And of course, after removing the pieces, uh, I need to get the little stubs from the posts off. So uh, here we have a center. Oh, and what you can see is uh, still lots of uh, loose powder that I have to remove. So that's also a major uh, disadvantage of using this method. I have to remove all the powder myself. Um, and for the little posts, you can see the little post here. I can just take a knife and cut them off quite cleanly. So the posts are not a problem for the puzzle themselves. So this was my first experiment with the sprues. The other experiment uh, is with the Sinter shell. What you see is a lot of pieces in a box. And Shapeways knew that the uh, new price model would affect the piece, uh, puzzles with many pieces or um, models with many pieces. So what they made, and I've been beta testing this, is a function that calls Sinter Shell and you upload your model and they model this shell around it. So for me, making this shell was just the push of a button. Um, for the price, it's shaved off about uh, 20 euro from this model. Of course, uh, going back in time and ordering this uh, before the price increase uh, would have reduced the price much more, but that's not an option. So getting off 20 euro of a model that is uh, already quite expensive is still a nice discount. So the Sinter Shell does take off uh, some money, um, not as much as I hoped. So how difficult is it to open a Sinter Shell? I've not tried that yet. Uh, as you can see, it's quite solid. So I have uh, some tools here, scissors, knife, um, and I'm going to try and open it. Uh, quite exciting. So as I feel, it's quite a tough material, but I think I can get in. So now I have room for my big scissor. And as you can see, it requires some force, but it looks uh, doable. Of course, be careful for your fingers, uh, 
you don't want to have uh, any red stains on your nice models. So, you see, I managed to open the center box that was uh, not too hard. And with the sprueing, you saw a lot of uh, powder. But let's see when I'm getting the pieces out. They look uh, quite fine. I've already found uh, one misprint. No, it's not a misprint. They've just been wedged together. And from the looks of it, uh, it looks quite nice. It's still a bit uh, powdery. I see some uh, powder residue here. So I will have to use my uh, toothbrush or some other tools to clean them up. But uh, well, I have a set of puzzle pieces. My question to you today is uh, about the term Sinter shell. What does the term Sinter shell mean? Where does the term come from? And also, what's the difference between a Sinter shell and a Sinter box? Thank you for watching.